Hello, my name is Joyce Dilliman. I'm an occupational therapist here at Meadville Medical Center. The things we're going to talk about today are what you'll need to bring to the hospital, what you're going to expect while you're here at the hospital, and the rules for the first two weeks following your surgery while you're recuperating at home. Please keep in mind that all of the instructions that I'm giving you at this time are general, and if you have any special circumstances or considerations that need to be brought to your surgeon's attention, you'll need to discuss that with him after this video. You will not need to bring any other equipment that you may have been gathering or getting in preparation for the surgery. You will use our canes, our walkers, our dressing equipment while you're staying in the hospital. Please leave yours at home. If you need to have your walker or cane to get into the hospital, certainly use it, but then have your family or friends take it back to the car so that it doesn't get lost during your surgical time. As far as clothes go, whatever undergarments you would normally wear to be comfortable, bring those. We do prefer that you wear loose fitting clothing. Elastic waistbands are generally more comfortable. You will probably put on at least 10 pounds, sometimes more, of fluid weight throughout the process of the surgery. The weight will come back off, but your clothes will be tight in the meantime. So loose fitting clothing, elastic waistbands are best. For your top half, anything that you're comfortable in would be fine. Short sleeves, long sleeves, some people prefer to bring both because you may find you're a little bit cold until you get started moving in your therapies and then you need to take some layers off. We do also want you to have regular shoes to wear, something with a, a nice non-skid sole and preferably something that goes around the back of your heel so you're not shuffling along trying to keep your feet shoved into your shoe. That's pretty much it as far as clothing goes. You may also want to bring some of your own toiletries. We certainly have toiletries here at the hospital for you to use, but if there's something in particular that you prefer to have, you can bring that with you. Now, you'll call the, the hospital the day before your surgery, and they'll tell you what time you need to arrive and also give you directions as to where you need to go. Following your surgery, you'll be transferred to the fourth floor at the Liberty Street facility. And once you're up on the, first, the fourth floor, nursing will assist you with bathing and also your medications. The doctors and surgeons will come in to see you, and physical therapy may or may not see you that first day of your surgery. It depends on what time you're done with your surgery and how you're doing. The day after your surgery, physical therapy will be coming into the room to help you do some stretching and go for a short walk. Occupational therapy will also be coming into your room, will help you with getting dressed and get your knee immobilizer on in preparation for your transfer to the Grove Street facility. When you're transferred to Grove Street, you'll come to the third floor to the rehabilitation unit. And once you're there, the nurses again will assist you with bathing and also with giving you your medications. And physical therapy will see you that first day at Grove Street here in the afternoon. The next morning, occupational therapy will come in again to assist you with getting dressed. We'll show you how to use the adaptive equipment for getting yourself dressed independently so you'll be able to do that at home. We'll also work on getting in and out of the bed using the cane as a leg lifter and talk to you more about correct positioning while you're recuperating. Social work will see you as well at Grove Street facility and they will help you to get any of the equipment that you might need to get for the time that you're recuperating as well. The doctor and the surgeon will also see you at Grove Street as they did at Liberty Street. You will be getting two sessions of physical therapy a day and two sessions of occupational therapy a day while you're staying at the Grove Street facility. Physical therapy will assist you again with walking with the walker. They'll make sure that you're able to navigate on the stairs safely. Make sure you're able to get in and out of the bed safely. Occupational therapy, again, will show you how to get dressed. We'll show you how to get in and out of the bathtub or the shower safely. Make sure that you're able to get up and down from the chair, from the toilet, from the bed, and make sure that you're able to get in and out of the car safely. I would also recommend, if it is at all possible, for a family member or a friend or somebody that's going to be assisting with your care upon your discharge to come to your therapy sessions, that they do so. You will find that you're going to be medicated for your pain control, and it's nice to have a second set of ears there, especially if it's somebody who's going to be assisting you in your home, so that they know as well as you know what you're to be doing after your discharge from the hospital. If it is not possible for them to do that, if they could at least, when they come in for the nurse's discharge, let one of the therapists know and we can certainly come and see them. 
Often people do leave that, that second day after surgery. However, if you're not feeling well, if you're not moving well, if for some reason we do not think that will be safe, you will not be going home that day. We will not send you home until we're sure that you're safe to go home. So you may want to pay, pack an extra couple of pairs of clothes just in case your stay ends up being a little bit longer than you anticipated. For the first two weeks following your surgery, you'll need to use a walker every single time you get up. We do want you using what we call a standard walker, which means there are no wheels on this thing. If the walker you have at home, the one you've borrowed or the one you've gotten from anywhere has wheels on it, please let us know so we can get the standard legs for you or assess how you're moving with a wheeled walker to determine if that would be safe or not. You will use the walker every single time you walk until the doctor tells you otherwise. Also during the first two weeks, once you leave this facility, we ask that you stay indoors until your two week follow up visit. We want you to limit the amount of time that you're up to no more than 20 minutes at a time, getting up for your meals, for toileting, and to take a shower or sponge bathe once a day. During this first two weeks that you're home, during the day when you're not up for one of those purposes of eating, toileting, or bathing, you will be laying down in such a way that your leg is elevated above the level of your heart. Now, to do this, you can use just a stack of pillows. Truly, when you're home, you'll probably need quite a stack of pillows because they tend to sink under the weight of your leg throughout the course of the day. So if I put at least two pillows here, if I'm laying down flat, that's good enough. All right. When you're laying during the day, have your leg elevated above the level of your heart. At night, you won't need those pillows. We do want you using a cane as a leg lifter, getting in and out of the bed until the doctor tells you otherwise. To use the cane as a leg lifter, you're gonna hook the handle of the cane into the arch of your foot. Keep your knee locked straight to give you better leverage with your arms, and you can just swing that leg right out of the bed. Do not bring your own equipment with you to the hospital. We will have all the equipment that you need available in your room for your use. If you need to order any of this equipment, we can make sure that that gets done for you before you leave here. The other equipment that will be available in your room would be the equipment getting used for getting dressed. That includes the reacher, which is used to get your shoes and socks off, as well as for getting your underwear and pants on. and the sock aid, which you can use to get your socks or your Ted hose on. As I said, these will be available for your use in your room. Please use them here to see if you like them or if you want them. I can use the reacher to push my shoes off as well as to get my socks off. I can also use the reacher to get my pants on. When you're getting dressed, we recommend that you dress the operated leg first as that leg does not move as well as your other leg. So once I get this leg in the hole, I can wiggle my other leg around however I need to. To use the reacher, when you pull the trigger here, it closes here. Get your waistband closed with the reacher. Get your foot through the hole. And once you can reach it with your hands comfortably, use your hands to pull it the rest of the way up. The other leg, you can just get in there the way you normally would. You can also use the reacher to get your pants off. After you've lowered your pants to knee level, you'll sit back down, use the reacher to get your clothes off so that you're not challenging your balance more than you need to as you're undressing. The sock aid is this. When you're using the sock aid, whether it's for the sock or for the Ted hose, you'll get the bottom of the sock or the bottom of the hose at the bottom of the trough. And you wanna get the toe as tight to this opening as you can get it. Smooth it out just to these knots. You'll hold one handle in each hand, drop this to the floor, put your foot in the hole, and once your foot is all the way to the end of that sock, you'll pull slowly, and as you reach your heel, angle it up the back side of your leg to get your sock on. When you're doing this with the Ted hose, it works the exact same way. You'll put the hose on the trough, smooth it out as much as you can. 
one handle in each hand, drop it to the floor, slide your foot in, pull slowly. You will be wearing the TED hose until the doctor tells you otherwise. You generally only need to wear them during the daytime and when you've had your hip done, they'll only be knee-high TED hose. You will need somebody to help you get these off. <laughs> The other thing you'll notice when you're here in the hospital is we will be using these pads to cover your incision. We do not tape them to your skin. The undergarments that we spoke about in the beginning is what is gonna hold this to your skin. So when you've had your hip done, we'll lay the pad over there and when you pull up your underwear, the waistband will just hold that in place for you. You will be given some of these when you go home so that you can cover your incision when you're at home as well. Your incision will be getting wet and clean. We ask that you use a very gentle soap. Here in the hospital, we tend to use the Johnson & Johnson baby soap, and you'll be given some of that to go home with. But any gentle soap will be fine. Nothing with any skin sloughing capabilities, nothing with microbeads, none of those lotions or ones with built-in lotion-y component, nothing that will get into your incision and cause an infection. Simple soap and water, dry it, and leave it alone. Nothing else will go anywhere on or near your skin where the incision is. The last thing that we need to cover today is how to get safely in and out of the bathtub shower. You will need something to sit on while you're in the bathtub or the shower, regardless of whether it's a bathtub shower combination like this or just a shower stall. If you have a shower stall, I do not recommend that you sit on a built-in shower seat. Those are generally low and they're generally not very deep this way and you end up kind of perched at the edge. So I do prefer that you have something separate to sit on for in the bathtub or the shower. There are two basic options available out there. This option is what we call a shower bench. It sits both inside and outside of the sh bathtub shower. The second option is what we call the shower seat, which is this, and this one sits entirely inside the shower. I'm going to show you how to get into the bathtub using both of these options. Please know that neither of these are covered by insurances of any kind. This is an out-of-pocket expense. I would prefer, if you don't already have something, that when you're here we can practice on both to, so you can see what you like better and we can get you whatever you need. All right. When you're using the, ba the bath bench, you'll back right up to that seat, lower yourself down gently, and then you can use the cane as a leg lifter to get your legs up and over the edge of the tub. You'll sit while you're showering. And when you're done, have somebody bring the cane back so you can get your legs back out. Get yourself squared back up on that chair again. While you're still sitting here, you're gonna get as dry as you can be. I don't want your arms and hands wet trying to grab a hold of that walker. I don't want the rest of your body wet making puddles on the floor that you can slip and slide in. Get dried off, get your walker, and get yourself back to bed. The other option is the bath seat. This sits entirely inside the bathtub or shower. You'll do exactly the same thing, only in this instance, as I back up to the seat, I don't feel the seat behind me, I feel the bathtub behind me. I need to double check visually that I'm squared up on that seat, reach back, and lower myself down gently. Again, you'll use that cane as a leg lifter to get your leg up and over the edge of the bathtub. And again, you will sit the entire time you're showering. When you're done, get that cane back. Get your legs back out of the tub. Get yourself squared back up on that chair and dried off before you start to move again. The last thing we need to discuss today are your hip precautions. These are the rules that will be in place until your doctor tells you otherwise. These are things we do not want you to do with your new hip. 
Your first rule is no bending past 90 degrees. Now when we're talking about 90 degrees, we're talking about the angle between your torso and your thigh. So while I'm sitting upright right now, I'm at 90 degrees of bend. You can go back as if to lay down, but we don't want you going forward towards your feet, which means you will have to use the adaptive equipment for getting dressed until the doctor tells you otherwise. That also means if you're sitting in the shower and you need to adjust the temperature of your water, you will not be able to bend forward to adjust the temperature of your water. That also means if you're laying flat in bed and all your pillows just got shoved around your feet, you will not be able to bend forward past 90 degrees to straighten everything out. That also means if you're sitting down eating your breakfast and you were looking at the paper while doing so and the paper just slid to the floor, you will not bend over to pick that up. I would recommend that you keep that reacher with you throughout the day. You can keep it at your walker and we'll show you how to do that once you get to the Grove Street facility so that you will always have something with you that you would not need to bend over to get things. So the first rule for your hip precautions, no bending past 90 degrees. The second rule is no crossing your legs. Obviously you will not be sitting like this, like this. That also means you will not be kicking your shoes off like this or itching that spot on the back of your leg with your other foot like this. We would like when you're laying down during the day to have the pillows that are under your knees, at least one of them going in between your legs as well so that you do not accidentally cross while you're lying in and down during the day resting. You will not be able to sleep on your side until the doctor tells you otherwise. As soon as I get onto my side, gravity pulls my leg down into that crossed over position. So no bending and no crossing. The last rule is no twisting over that new hip. That means if somebody has brought your clothes to your bedside for you to get dressed in the morning and the phone rang and they went to get it and they dropped your clothes over here, you're not gonna twist all the way over like this to grab those clothes because you've just twisted over your new hip. That also means when you're going to move with your walker, and I'm going that way, I'm not going to move my walker and then just twist along behind it. You'll need to take small steps when you're turning with your walker, keeping your walker and, and your body pretty much in the same general direction so that you're not twisting over that hip. That also means that you may find when you're in the hospital and that extra fluid weight is on that you have difficulty wiping. Now, the seats of the toilet have handrails here. You can't twist this way to get anything. You can't get there from the front. You'll have to stand to wipe with the walker in front of you. Make sure all of that motion comes from your hand and then you're not doing a giant twist over that hip to get to things when you're wiping or when you're getting cleaned up in the shower. You will be getting a handout about your hip precautions. We'll go over them more in detail while you're in the hospital. But please keep in mind, all of these rules are in place until the doctor tells you otherwise. And that will be beyond the first two weeks. This is important that you follow these hip precautions so that your hip does not dislocate and that that soft tissue can heal the way it needs to heal to keep everything in place. So to review, for the first two weeks following your surgery, we do want you to stay at home, in your home, while you're recuperating. Do not step outdoors again until you're going to get in your car for your two-week follow-up visit. Make sure you're using a walker every single time you walk until the doctor tells you otherwise. Please limit the amount of time that you're up to no more than 20 minutes at a time, getting up for meals, getting up for toileting, and getting up for showering at least once a day. We also want to make sure that when you're laying down during the day, you have your leg elevated above the level of your heart, generally with a stack of pillows under your knee to keep that leg up and that hip in a comfortable position. Please make sure that you do not do stairs more than once a day, and when you go back for your two-week follow-up visit, the doctor will tell you what's next. If you have any questions, in the meantime, please feel free to call the nurse's station here on the rehab unit. The number is 814-333. 5320. The nurses on this unit are excellent. They know the doctor's protocols inside and out. If you have any questions, they'll be able to answer them for you. If there's something that they can't answer, they will get a hold of the doctor and find out for you so that either he or they can get back to you. So do not hesitate to call if you have any questions at all.